In this video, I'm going to talk about whether you should buy a 1080 Ti or not. So I have been trying to create this video for a long time now, but just uh, procrastinating. So I have been using this graphics card for almost last five or six months and I have used almost uh, for most of the type of applications starting from game to 3D design and video creation and all this stuff. So one by one I will see if uh, this graphics card, uh, $850 graphics card really helped me in the software or the applications uh, that I have used. So let's first start with game. There are a lot of videos already out there explaining each graphics card for each type of monitors and the resolution and uh, frequency of uh, refresh rate. So I'm not going to go more detail into the gaming section, but generally, if you are planning to play a game in a 4K monitor or a 2K monitor with higher frame rate, then yes, uh, you got to have a higher powerful um, graphics card, something like 20 Ti. For 4K monitor, hands down you need a TI. For 2K 1080 will work, but it's better to have a little bit of bandwidth and go for the TI one so that you can upgrade the monitor later at some point. But if you're like me and playing a game in regular 1080 monitor, 1080p monitor, then GTX 1080 TI is ridiculously overkill for 1080p monitor. Because right now I'm playing Skyrim and before that I played uh, Tomb Raider and honestly none of the game used even 30% of my GPU. So let me quickly show you around. So if you have a 1080 monitor and want to play a game with maximum detail possible just go for a 1050 Ti or even a 1060 will work really good for you and save some money. Okay so the next section is photo and video editing. After installing this graphics card, I did some, uh, I created some time lapse using Lightroom and I did some uh, photo edit in Photoshop with multiple layers and all. But uh, none of the softwares actually used uh, the full potential of the GPU, maybe less than 10%. In most of the cases, whenever I used uh, Photoshop, Adobe softwares like Photoshop and Lightroom to edit photographs, only thing that was exhausted was the CPU and RAM. So the course of CPU and the speed of RAM and the, uh, and the frequency of CPU really matters for your uh, video and photo editing, not the GPU. Maybe down the line all the software will uh, realize the importance of utilizing the CUDA powers uh, and then probably they will share the bandwidth between CPU and GPU. But right now even I tried to tweak the softwares but it ended up using even less than 10% of my GPU power and the whole burden was on CPU. So the last type of application I want to discuss uh, regarding this graphics card is uh, 3D application. So softwares like AutoCAD and 3ds Max and uh, rendering software like V-Ray. I didn't use a lot of uh, other, other applications and software but for these three softwares I can say whenever we tried to render an uh, image with a lot of textures and materials and depth and details unfortunately it used nothing of the GPU and the full 100% power uh, was on the CPU and it eats up the entire CPU bandwidth and eats up the whole 16 GB of RAM even if I upgrade to 32 GB, I doubt if that will uh, improve my rendering uh, time or not. So basically you can use VDA in either VDA Advanced mode or VDA RT mode. VDA RT does provide the option to use GPU or the CUDA power um, to uh, speed up your rendering. Whereas you know, VDA Advanced still rely on the CPU power. But unfortunately VDA Advanced provides more flexibility of render setup whereas VDA RT does not. So it's like sacrificing one or the other. If you want more flexibility in rendering setup and ease of operation, you have to use VDA at once and you have to lose using GPU. You have to just trust on the CPU. And on the other hand, you can use VDA RT, which will let you select the GPU as a render engine, but it will not be as good as VDA at once. So in the last couple of months, other than playing games and other than rendering or photo editing most of the time my GPU was like sitting there idly displaying two three monitors and that, that's all. Now another last part is 
what about VR? Okay, so for VR, yes, you have to have a powerful GPU because as you can see, I have two monitors and sometimes I connect my television. So, oh, pardon the surround sound. So as you can see, I have two monitors and sometimes I attach my television and then the VR. So having a graphics card more than 1070 is recommended for VR. And uh, if you can afford something like 1080 or 1080 Ti, I mean, having a 1080 Ti will make sure that you are good with VR or 4K monitor, latest games and everything in between. But if you are solely looking on a performance computer for your content creation for photo, video, 3D, animation kind of work, then I would say go for the processor that has as much code as possible, as faster as possible and as faster RAM or as much RAM as you can afford first then look for the GPU because in the right, right now all the softwares are still not capable to use all the potential of the graphics cards. So let me show you the, my performance in the, some of the renderings and photo editing. Okay, so here you can see before the start of the render, my CPU performance is around 4% and GPU is uh, as usual at 1% and this is EVGA precision controller that actually shows the uh, health and temperature and uh, a couple of other stuff uh, of the graphics card and it's currently in a very normal and uh, under load status. So, so let me quickly start the render process and now see if we can see any difference in the utilization of CPU and the graphics card power. So here we go. Render process started. It, as you can see, we are it's almost close to 4K resolution render. And render is going on, and now let's check what we have here. We have 90 100 percent of CPU, 54 percent of memory, and 9 percent of sorry, 5 4. 1% of GPU utilization and in EVGA precision what we can see everything is stable only 53 degrees centigrade that's it all right so rendering engine not using GPU at all 